Women save a raccoon's life. He keeps coming back to them after three years. But before we start, please take a moment to give this video a like, subscribe to Happy World and hit the bell so you'll never miss these great stories. Three years ago, Nikki Robinson found a little raccoon by the road. She saved him and after a bunch of attempts at taking him to wildlife centers and vets, Nikki was disappointed in the lack of help. However, her mother Linda has had experience raising raccoons and after a little persuasion took the little critter in. They named him Little Hands and fell in love with the trash panda. Little Hands needed lots of love and support. Linda and Nikki fed him, raised him and eventually let him go. To their surprise, Little Hands kept coming back, sometimes after a few days, sometimes after a few months. He'd come back and ask for snuggles, pets, foods, and just love. Neither Nikki nor Linda have ever experienced such a loving raccoon. Little Hans was originally found abandoned beside a road at about four weeks old. We rescued him from the traffic and tried to find the wildlife rehab that would take him, but everywhere was full and all they could offer was to take it to a vet to be euthanized or let nature take its course. Instead, he was given to my mom Linda, who's had some experience in raising a raccoon so that it could be released into the wild. Two years earlier, I picked up from a friend another orphan raccoon that was found in a similar situation as Little Hands. I've always wanted to work in wildlife rehabilitation, but I was working full time, so I asked my mom to help with many of the daily feedings. She was hesitant at first, but then I told her it was really in lieu of any grandchildren I'd be giving her. Well, once the baby starts nursing from a bottle and looks her in the eye, she melts and it instantly becomes Mama's coon. So Little Hands was fostered by Linda. He was released onto her large property and was allowed to come and go as he pleased. He was very fearful of any human or animal he didn't grow up with but would come back to visit us most nights. Linda would leave food out for him every night and sit outside on the porch swing at night before bed waiting for his visit. He'd come less and less and always at night as it got colder. Sometimes we wouldn't see him for a month and then on a clear night he would show up and even let us approach him. But the first thing he'd do, sometimes even before sniffing his food, is he'd climb over to Linda on the swing, sit beside her and want pads from her. He liked his lower back and chin rubbed the most. When we found Little Hands, he was dehydrated, hungry, very scared, but still very feisty. Little Hands stayed with us for about two and a half months before he was fully released into the wild. Little Hands has always been a calmer, peaceful raccoon, very loving and compassionate even as he matured, but still wild enough he thrives on his own. We asked Nikki what their reaction was when Little Hands returned to them. Pure joy, and every time he came back it was a more and more joyous occasion, especially because he wanted our attention as well as our food, which was all that much more special. They tell us how many animals they've saved. I think our total now is over 15 raccoons over 5 years. I've also worked with several other animals, but none as close as the raccoons. My mom and I would like to open an official wildlife rehabilitation center in the future, and I'm working on getting more licenses and training for different species. But in the end, we take the raccoons because no one else will due to their abundance in nature already. Every animal deserves a chance, right? This has gone on for three years. All the other releases have gone wild. The ones that were released at Linda's house still come and eat at night, sometimes bring their babies too, but they're scared of us and won't approach us closely. Little Hands is just special and super adorable. Nikki guessed why Little Hands returned to them. I guess this was always his home. He knows he can come back for an easy meal, but some animals want more than a full stomach. Comfort and love. The best part of saving animals is watching them grow, learn, thrive, and mature. The hardest part, which is also one of the best parts, is release time. Usually by the time of release, they've already been mostly on their own, but still confined in an outdoor enclosure. When the time comes to do our soft release, we don't know if we may see them again. Nikki tells us more about herself. I don't like being in the spotlight myself, but I can say I'm passionate about animals of all kinds. I've been in the vet field for a few years and we're educated in what we do. I've always loved animals and if I'm not working with or rescuing them, I'm trying to photograph them in the wild. One day I'd love to be able to fund our rescue by selling photography prints since, since any wildlife rehab is expensive and 100% self-funded. Be smart and safe if you're passionate about wildlife rehab or rescue. We did a lot of research and got licensed to do this where we live. It's different in all states and countries, so please check your laws. This is to protect you and the animal. Be kind. We share the planet with so many creatures that need to be respected. Creatures that we mostly don't understand but are capable of complex social systems and emotions we often think are exclusive to humans.